Good evening friends, welcome to my channel Critical Care Basics. In coming few videos, we are going to discuss an important topic in critical care that is ABG analysis. So in this first lecture on ABG, we are basically going to talk about the indications and the actual technique of taking a sample of ABG, right? In the next lecture, we are going to talk about the asset based interpretation of ABG and in the third lecture, we will talk about the assessment of oxygenation from ABG. So let us start ABG analysis. <clears throat> 9 out of 10 patients in ICU have disorders of acid base balance. That is why ABG is very important for any person, any staff or any doctor who is working in critical care. What is an ABG? ABG is arterial blood gas analysis is a test that measures following parameters oxygen tension that is PaO2, carbon dioxide tension that is P small a CO2, acidity that is pH, oxyhemoglobin saturation. There is a difference between PaO2 small aO2 and saturation. Saturation is the percentage of hemoglobin that is saturated with oxygen and PaO2 is the percent of uh, percentage of oxygen that is dissolved in the plasma. So this is oxygen tension and this is oxygen saturation. Bicarb is calculated from by formula from the above values and <coughs> some blood gas analyzers also give an idea about different types of hemoglobin like methemoglobin, carboxyhemoglobin and also hemoglobin levels. Some also measure chloride and lactate and calcium. So, you can select on which parameters are most useful to you. What are the indications of doing an ABG for identifying acid based disturbances? For example, whether the patient has acidosis, alkalosis, metabolic or respiratory and mixed disorders. Measurement of partial pressures of oxygen PaO2 and carbon dioxide PaCO2. Assessment of response to therapies. For example, in ketoacidosis, if you, have, if you have started a patient on insulin infusion and the ketone becomes negative in urine, but you still continue the infusion till the pH normalizes. So this is the uh, uh, value of uh, doing an ABG in ketoacidosis. Then detection and quantification of levels of abnormal hemoglobins like carboxyhemoglobin and sometimes when venous access is not there, you can use an arterial sample. These are the contraindications. Some contraindications are absolute and some are relative. Absolute contraindications are abnormal modified Allen's test. We will come to what is Allen's test. Then local infection, infection, thrombosis, distorted anatomy at the puncture site. Example previous surgical intervention, congenital or acquired malformation, burns, aneurysm, stent, AV fistula and vascular graft. Severe peripheral vascular disease of the artery selected for sampling. So if there is a peripheral uh, disease of that artery, the sample should not be taken from that place. And active Raynaud syndrome. Raynaud syndrome is uh, a disease in which there is sudden spasm after some stimuli, especially cold. So the arteries go in severe spasm. So if the patient has similar uh, Raynaud syndrome, then it becomes an absolute contraindication. While if the patient has Raynaud's disease but no syndrome, that is a relative contraindication. So relative contraindications are suprathrapeutic coagulopathy and infusion of thrombolytic agents. For example, the patient is being thrombolyzed for say myocardial infarction or a stroke. So these are the relative contraindications for taking an ABG sample. Contraindications to arterial stick and absolute contraindication for indwelling catheter. This, this is a relative contraindication for taking an arterial sample and an absolute contraindication for putting an arterial line. Right? So avoid repeated arterial needle sticks when the INR is more than 3 and APTT is more than 100. So again relative contraindication when the platelet count is less than 30,000, a platelet count led less than 50,000 is generally a contraindication for arterial catheter. So if the platelet count is less than 50,000 that is generally a contraindication for putting an arterial line and less than 30,000 is a relative contraindication for taking an ABG sample. As we have just discussed, Raynaud's disease or Raynaud uh, without active spasm 
or evidence of peripheral uh, poor per peripheral perfusion for example there are no synoptic digits then this becomes a relative and not an absolute contingent contraindication for taking a abg sample therapeutic anticoagulation now earlier we talked about thrombolysis thrombolysis is different this is anticoagulation so therapeutic anticoagulation is not a contraindication for arterial puncture although the risk of bleeding is higher but it is related to contraindication for insert insertion of indwelling catheter for example if the patient ha is has sustained a non uh, uh, non stemi or uh, mi and the patient is on clixane 60 mg bd so that becomes a related to contraindication for putting an arterial line but you can still take an arterial sample so increased vessel compression is appropriate in such patient so increase time for compression normal compression time is about 5 minutes so you can uh, compress for more than 5 minutes for such patient aspirin or other antiplatelet agent especially example clopidogrel are not a contraindication for arterial vascular sampling so antiplatelets if the patient is taken you can still take an arterial sample so what is modified allen's test the finger is uh, the hand is supplied by two arteries from the medial aspect the ulnar artery from the lateral aspect radial artery and together they form a palmar arch so in modified allen's test we first pressed both the arteries till and uh, with the wrist closed we press both the arteries and then open the wrist naturally it becomes blanched so it looks white then after some time when it looks absolutely white we release the ulnar artery so if we release the ulnar artery it becomes immediately it becomes pink so that means that this uh, this palmar arch is patent in that case you can uh, easily take a radial sample but if for 10 seconds or more than 6 seconds the limb does not get pink then that is a positive modified allen's test in that case uh, you should not take a radial sample So this is modified allen's test patient has initially held high with the fist clench both radial and ulnar arteries are compressed firmly by two thumbs of the investigator this allows the blood to drain from the hand so it is kept high and both arteries are blocked then the hand is lowered and the fist is opened the palm palm will appear white over extension of the hand or white spreading of the finger should be avoided then the pressure is released from the ulnar artery while occlusion maintained at the radial artery a pink color should return to the palm usually within 6 seconds indicating that the ulnar artery is patent and the superficial palm arch is intact test is generally considered abnormal if 10 seconds or more elapses before the color returns to uh, ret uh, the pink color returns to the hand in that case uh, that is becomes a contraindication for taking a radial sample so there are some technical difficulties sometimes in taking a abg sample for example a patient is uncooperative or pulses cannot be felt for example the patient is in shock or high dose vasopressor infusion or sometimes the patient has arteriosclerosis from end stage kidney disease or calcification of vessel wall sometimes patient cannot be positioned appropriately example the patient has fixed flexion deformity of the hand cannot fully extend the wrist for the radial artery access due to tremor or joint contractures or sometimes the patient is obese or has edema all over the body in that case ultrasound may be useful to locate the artery and reduce potential complications of repeated puncture and consequent injury to the target vessel so site selection initial step in percutaneous needle puncture is locating a palpable artery common sites include radial femoral brachial dorsal aspidus or axillary there is no evidence that any site is superior to others the most preferred preferred site is the radial artery because it is the most superficial of all the arteries Uh, i would recommend that you do not use brachial uh, artery or axillary artery because of the risk of uh, vasospasm or thrombosis unless you are an expert in taking uh, taking an abg sample so the best artery you should use is the radial artery or femoral artery there is no evidence that any site is superior to the others i would say radial is definitely safer than using a brachial artery radial artery is used most often because it is accessible and more comfortable for the patient and than the alternative sites the radial artery is also typically used for outpatients because you don't have to maintain compression for longer period of time so for inpatients you can use the radial or the femoral route the most commonly or sometimes you can also use dorsal aspidus if you can palpate <clears throat> 
So this is how you take a radial sample. The hand is extended. You can keep a folded towel and radial artery is immediately lateral to the tendon of uh, flexor carpi radialis. So this is the tendon of flexor carpi radialis. Medial to the tendon is the nerve, median nerve and lateral to the tendon is uh, radial artery. You can see the radial artery immediately overlies the lower end of the radius. You can also use uh, ultrasound to detect the radial artery. So this is the medial now, this is the tendon of flexor carpi radialis and this is the radial artery. So radial artery is best palpated between the distal radius and the tendon of flexor carpi between the radius and the texano, uh, tendon of flexor carpi radialis. So here you can easily feel the radial artery and you can take a sample. It is best done with the wrist mildly extended as shown in the figure and the needle goes at the angle of 30 to 45 degrees. Second site is the femoral artery. In femoral artery, note that the most medial is the vein followed by the femoral artery and most lateral is the nerve. So if you go more lateral, you are likely to injure the nerve and if you go more medial, you are likely to take venous sample. So that is why <coughs> what you do is you palpate the pubic tubercle and the anterior spine. So you first fix the uh, uh, fix the position of the inguinal ligament and then midpoint of the inguinal ligament usually coincides with the artery. Always take the puncture below the inguinal ligament because below the inguinal ligament you can press the femoral artery, it is compressible. Above the inguinal ligament the artery which is called the external iliac is already in the abdomen so you cannot press the artery if the puncture continues to bleed. right? If you, it is uh, best to use ultrasound if you take a femoral sample. In ultrasound, if you keep a linear probe just below the inguinal ligament, you can see medially the femoral vein and common femoral artery, laterally femoral nerve. If you go slightly below, then femoral artery divides into superficial femoral and dis, uh, distal femoral, uh, deep femoral. Here, you may go uh, through the vein into the artery. So avoid taking sample at this point. Take sample at this point so that you can, uh, there is less chance of going through the vein, right? <clears throat> Here you have to go at 90 degrees angle. Brachial artery, brachial artery is best palpated medial to the biceps tendon at the anterior cubital fossa. So this is the, this is the biceps tendon and medial to the biceps tendon at the anterior cubital fossa is the brachial artery, medial to the artery is the median nerve. So uh, remember only expert people should put, uh, try to take sample from this place. I would not recommend for the people who are new to ICU because they can cause spasm or damage to the artery. They can also damage the nerve. So do not attempt the arm placed on the firm, surface, firm, firm surface for surface with shoulder slightly abducted, elbow extended and the forearm in full supination. Needle should be inserted just above the elbow crease at 30 degrees angle. Axillary artery is very rarely used for taking sample. If the distal hand or arm is crushed in a polytrauma patient or sometimes in the operation theater when the patient is fully covered, then you can take uh, axillary artery is best palpated in ax axilla when the arm is abducted and externally rotated. So arm is abducted, externally rotated. This is the axillary artery. The needle should be inserted as high into the apex of axilla as, as possible. So this is the needle being uh, going inside and this is the axillary artery. So it is best used in with the help of the ultrasound. <coughs> Lastly, dorsalis pedis artery. Dorsalis pedis is direct continuation of anterior tibial artery below the uh, distal to the ankle joint. It passes on the dorsal surface of foot running towards the first dorsal interosseous space. So this is the first dorsal interosseous space and it is usually palpable between the tendons of external hallucis longus and external digitorum longus. So these, this is the tendon of extern, ex, uh, extensor digitorum longus and this is the tendon of extensor hallucis longus. So just lateral to the tendon of external hallucis longus, you can feel the uh, dorsal pedis artery. You can also take the help of ultrasound, a linear probe, so that you get a clear view of the dorsal pedis artery before taking a sample. Again, you go at 30 degrees. You can also perform Allen's test for dorsal pedis. So 
the supply is through the posterior tibial and the dorsal spadix. So you can first press the posterior tibial and see for the blanching and then release posterior tibial. Equipment you need not take sterile gloves, non-sterile gloves are enough, antiseptic skin solution, chlorhexidine or betadine. Some uh, people have the luxury of having an ABG kit with a pre heparinized 3 ml ABG syringe with 20 to 25 gauze. Normally, I have seen at many centers that people use a 5 ml or 2 ml syringe to take the sample. In that, the needle is slightly larger. We usually prefer to have a needle which is 22 gauge or uh, 22 gauge or 25 gauge. So, we require a really small needle so that it is less painful. 2 into 2 inch sterile gauze. If we have pre heparinized syringe, that is best because the dose of heparin is calculated. If the dose of heparin is uh, taken slightly higher than normal, then the readings can change. So, pre heparinized syringe are better because they have fixed heparin solution and the needle is usually very small. They are meant for taking ABGs. Adhesive bandage, plastic hazard bag, and sharp object container. <coughs> ABG is painful, so do we give local anesthesia if multiple pricks are required and the sample is being taken by a person who is not a real expert in it. So sometimes you need to give anesthesia especially if the patient is worried or apprehensive. So in that case you give 0.5 to 1 ml of anesthetic bleb just above the artery, do not give more uh, solution anesthesia other, otherwise you would not be able to palpate the artery. In expert hand, usually anesthesia is not required. Topical anesthetic cream is of no use. So, if at all you have to use anesthesia, use a proper, proper local anesthesia, but give very small amount just at the point where the needle enters. 2% lidocaine and technique of withdrawing sample. One of the two fingers should be used gently to palpate the artery. While holding the needle in the other hand, both fingers should be proximal. The needle should be held like this not like this. If the you have to take the femoral sample, you can hold like this, but most of the time it is held like this, a pen. Placing the non-dominant middle finger distally and non-dominant index finger proximally, like this is the artery, I am putting middle finger here and index finger here and putting the needle in between the two. Was initially practiced, but there is a risk of needle stick injury, hence this practice has been stopped. You just put, uh, put the middle finger distally and go proximally. Angle of insertion is 30 to 45 degrees in all the side except the femoral artery where you go at 90 degrees. The syringe fills on its own. Pulling the plunger is usually not required. When you pull the plunger, there is higher chance of taking a venous sample as well. So this is the angle. <coughs> For the patient with poor distal perfusion, weak arterial pulse, the operator may need to pull back sometimes, although this increases the risk of venous blood sampling. Arterial flow is lost during, if the arterial flow is lost during the arterial draw, the needle may have to be moved outside the vessel and readjusted. But mind, multiple blind or stabbing movements of the needle while it is inserted deeply in the patient's limb have to be avoided since this increases the risk of local injury and pain. So, do not do multiple punctures like this, right. After withdrawing the sufficient volume of blood, the needle should be removed while simultaneously applying pressure at the puncture site. Apply pressure to the puncture site for 5 minutes. I would highly recommend that everybody follows these instructions. Many times I have seen nurses and doctors just taking a sample and forgetting to press. So, that causes a hematoma. 5 minutes in a non anticoagulated patient. If the patient is on oral anticoagulants or IV anticoagulants, then you should press for larger, longer amount of time. Avoid checking the puncture site until local pressure has been maintained for at least this period. So, in between, till the 5 minutes are complete, do not see the puncture site. Just keep it pressed for at least 5 minutes. In patients who have coagulopathy or on anticoagulation therapy, it may be necessary for keeping the pressure for a longer period of time. Once hemostasis is achieved, apply adhesive bandage. Now, what do we do with the sample? Recap, remove and discard the needle. So, you have to take the container, sharps container, so that the needle is properly discarding the sharp container to avoid needle stick injury. 
remove the excess air in the syringe by holding upright and gently tapping the syringe like this so that the bubbles come up and remove the bubbles otherwise that can these bubbles the air from these bubbles can get dissolved in the blood and change the values cap the syringe roll it between the hands like this so that it the blood properly mixes with the heparin and there is no coagulation and then you can keep the syringe in ice bag post procedural care monitor for skin color changes persistent worsening of pain so if there is persistent worsening of pain there could be that could be due to hematoma or injury to nerve or some ischemia so if the patient complains do look uh, do have a look and uh, immediately inform your seniors if there is active bleeding impaired movement of sensation of the limb then inform your seniors immediately and uh, get that problem attended to special, special attention in patients who are on anticoagulants or are given thrombolytics so in those patients who are on anticoagulant or have deranged INR or APTT or reduced platelet count so um, give proper time and take special precautions if there are bubbles this we have already discussed they should be bubbles should be promptly renew, uh, removed sample rolled and keep kept in ice pack arterial blood sample should be placed on ice during transport to the lab and then analyze, analyze as quickly as possible why because arterial blood gas measurements by the analyzer are affected by temperature specifically ph increases and both po2 and pco2 decreased as temperatures decline so this is usually not a problem in india but in uh, temperature in countries where the temperatures are very low so they, they usually give temperature corrected values for abg also so you have the normal values and uh, the values that you got and the temperature corrected values usually in india that is not a big problem these are the complications of uh, abg taking sample there could be local complications like local pain paresthesia bruising local minor bleeding patient could have a vasovagal response or local hematoma from, from moderate to major bleeding especially if the patient is on anticoagulation artery vasospasm less frequent infection at the puncture site air or thrombosembolism so this is a dangerous thing to happen this is less frequent but if a thrombus forms in the artery especially if we put in the brachial artery or the femoral artery then this can cause distal limb ischemia that is dangerous local anesthetic uh, anaphyl local anesthetic anaphylactic reaction this is rare local nerve injury needle stick injury to healthcare person so beware of this many many times the patient comes in emergency or you are taking an ABG sample you don't know that whether the patient is austral antigen positive or HIV positive so always use the glow properly discard the needle I have seen this happening that a patient that the sample was taken and later it was found that the patient was austral anti -pos antigen positive so take proper care of taking ABG sample in emergency and rare complications are arterial occlusion from a local hematoma pseudo aneurysm formation and vessel laceration so every procedure every ABG sample should be taken very seriously so as to avoid these dangerous complications so that is all about how we take a sample when ABG is indicated and how we process the sample in next lecture, we will talk about the acid base interpretation of an ABG. Thanks a lot. If you are liking these videos, please like, subscribe and share. Bye-bye.